master the business of speaking with your hosts, Taylor and Austin. You're listening to Technically Speaking. Welcome to another episode of Technically Speaking. We're your hosts, Taylor and Austin. And in today's episode, we're talking about how to bring your content from one to one to one to many particularly through the lens of courses and group coaching programs. Now, we've heard firsthand from all of our clients who have launched courses or group coaching programs that sometimes the results are subpar. Uh, It's hard to fill a bunch of people into a course at $297 or even $1,000 or fill a group coaching program cohort after cohort after cohort. And not only is the marketing tough, but sometimes the curriculum design is tough. So we wanted to bring in an expert that could help us unpack all of these different issues and misconceptions and ideas we all have about courses and group coaching programs and to help give us a little bit of guidance. And that guest expert is Jessica Terzakis. Now, Jessica is an expert in curriculum design and as a kid, she would actually teach her stuffed animals as her students and eventually segued that into a full-time teaching career and then furthermore segued that into helping entrepreneurs take what's in their head and in their vision and turn that into a curriculum that can help broaden their business, create more impact and get their story out there. So Jessica knows firsthand what it takes to develop courses and group coaching programs that brings people through a transformation and gets people into your business and how to actually sell these and market these programs so that you're not disappointed in the results of what it takes to fill a course or a group coaching program. She's been passionate about curriculum design for many years, and Jessica has found nothing more satisfying than creating a successful lesson plan for entrepreneurs like us. And she's the perfect fit for today's show. Austin and I learned an absolute ton, and she has this way of taking this really complex idea of running courses and group coaching programs and marketing them and distilling them down into really simple tactical next steps that we can all take. So as always, we hope you enjoy this one and stick around till the end for some awesome resources that Jessica has to offer. See you in there. You're going to make your noises again, Austin? I thought about it. Should I? Should yeah, I, was, just, I mean, I think people are clicking at this time. Somebody stop me, please. Jessica, for context, <laughs> lately Austin's been starting a show. He'll like make some song, basically. And then so we've been just leaving it in at the beginning of the show. Uh, so anyway, when he didn't have one going, I thought, you know, we got to we got to get him to sing a little, little song. That's fair. So. <laughs> yeah. You're in for Very something fair. today, Jessica. So oh, excited. Excited. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very before unusual. This, right before we started recording, you were saying that uh, you're excited to talk about whatever we're going to talk about. So I'm hoping you can unpack like maybe astrophysics or string theory. Like, do you mind yeah, just kind of giving us your physics background? And <laughs> Yes, uh, actually. I do all of that in like five minutes. Are you ready oh, for it? Perfect. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Absolutely. Great. Yes. <laughs> I was like, I'm, I'm ready for it. <laughs> there was part of me. I'm not going to lie. There's part of me hearing you say that, just hoping you were going to like launch into an yeah, academic right. lecture about string theory or something. Wouldn't that have been amazing? Okay. So I'm impressive. an academic, but I'm like an English literature, like nice. old, old writing kind of nerd. Um, so much respect for like astrophysics and physics in general, but that is not that is not Just my way. The of opposite expertise. end of the spectrum. Yeah, for the opposite end of the spectrum yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh man. Well, this is going to be fun. Luckily for you listeners, we're not talking about string theory today, and instead curriculum design, which is going to be really awesome. Jessica, you have quite the depth here, so we're really excited to unpack this. Uh, but of course, uh, we want to know more about you and your background. So, how did you go from? old literature nerd into curriculum design. <laughs> can you unpack that background yeah. for us? <laughs> yeah, I can see why people would be like, how did you end up How did those here? connect? <laughs> uh, Maybe they're more so, related than I mean, think. they're probably pretty close. You know, it's probably like, helpful. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I got started in teaching. So I went to school uh, to be a teacher, got my master's in English teaching, taught high school for six years. So one of the things I like This is the only math that I do, right? I calculated how many 14 and 15 year olds I taught in the span that I was a teacher. And it's probably around like a little bit over 500. So I taught over 500, 14 and 15 year olds intended to retire as a teacher and made it a whopping six years. And I was like, okay, this is not sustainable, right? Like I, everyone knows, right? It doesn't matter like whether you have a teacher in your family or you just read the news, like teachers don't get paid a lot of money. They just don't. So I was like, well, I've got to figure out something to do. So I actually 
Um, it's funny. I have a version of this story and my mom has a very different version of this because my mom and I are business partners. And she said this to me the other day. So my version is, well, I just left teaching and I didn't really have a plan. I just didn't sign my contract. And then like there was nothing. I literally left without a plan and kind of accidentally in my mind, that's how I interpret the story, fell into entrepreneurship. So I was like, well, I don't really want to go get a job. I don't have a portfolio. I can't get into PR or copywriting. So what do I do? So I got into the coaching space. So my mom had already started a business coaching business and was working with a lot of clients. And it was at that time, what I noticed was a lot of entrepreneurs were super, super smart and really good at what they did. And they just were really not so great at teaching and talking about what they did and helping people, you know, learn from them. I was like, these are really smart people and they would make a lot more money if they just knew how to teach. Right. Now, my mom's version is, well, wait a second. For the last two years that you were teaching, I was seeding this idea of like, hey, you should go into this business with me. And wouldn't it be fun if we did this business together? It was all was her like, idea. <laughs> I was like, oh, my gosh, you're absolutely like when I look back, I was like, oh, my God, you did do that. So um, so that's the quick story of how I went from teaching into entrepreneurship. And that was back in 2017. So wow. I've been doing so I've been developing curriculum for over 10 years, specifically with entrepreneurs for the past five years. And my mission is basically, I feel like there could be so many better online courses and programs out there. And I'm just like, I want to help people create really killer curriculum so that they can teach more people, grow their businesses, make more money and make a difference. And that's sort of my, my angle. Heck yeah. Oh, man, Jessica, I love your mission. I like you as a human being. So thank you for sharing all of that. I cannot help but make the observation that like us and you like have a very similar trajectory towards getting into this space. Like in technically unrelated industries, made the observation that like there's all these specialists that just need some structure to be able to do a better job. And then you came at it from the angle of education and curriculum and teaching and structuring content. And we came at it from the angle of business systems. But it's it's actually the same problem that both of us saw and both of us happened to just be like, ah, we might be able to solve this problem. So I feel a kinship towards you already, Jessica. <laughs> yes, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Well, um, so like help us uh, get a, a better sense for like the type of work that you do with your clients because we hear coursework and curriculum and these are buzzwords, right? So it can ground us for a minute here in terms of like, what's the practical side of what you're creating with your clients typically? So typically, you know, when I, the, the words I use to describe what I do is I help people develop courses and group coaching programs. They're both sort of two different types of offers, right? There's the passive online course, and then there's the interactive sort of live group coaching model. Now, what I do with both of them is pretty similar. Like people will come to me and they're like, I've got this idea, or I've got these 50 ideas. I've been sitting on this idea for freaking ever. And, um, I, took so-and-so's passive course on how to build a course or how to put a con, you know, content together. And it's taken me nowhere. And so usually what I do for someone is we sit down and journalist style, I usually pull out of their head what the most profitable idea is that they can make the most money with for their topic, for their course or program. And then literally I help them build what is the curriculum. Now curriculum means basically a set of sequential steps that you take someone from point A to point C, D, E, F, or wherever to get them a desired outcome. And a lot of, I jokingly say, a lot of my time is spent telling people the word no. Like, no, that's too much. No, that you don't need that. No, your client really doesn't need to have your book list. So, so it's funny, like that's where I spend most of my time is saying the word no. And actually people walk away from working with me realizing that you actually don't need a ton of content. And this is a fun conversation I get into about worth and worthiness and what our value is, is I think a lot of people make the mistake of thinking like to be a valuable course creator, to be a valuable content creator, I have to give everything, right? Everything I've ever learned. And people walk away surprised at how little content they actually have created from the, the mess that they brought me and how much more valuable that is. Wow. That's an interesting thought. Yeah, I I can feel that too. I mean, we have a bit of coursework here at SpeakerFlow and it's like, we just want to give everything all the things we know because then that's what is valuable, you know? And 
it's probably not the case because we're not really acting as a filter at that point, you know? So I think what you said was really cool is that like by saying no, you're, you're acting as a filter. You're giving people permission to not worry about all the other stuff that's out there and can give people a distilled set of things to focus on rather than all the things they could be doing. It kind of lasers them in. It sounds like. It does. It does. I think it's an interesting, so there's, there's two parts to it. I think in terms of the wanting to give everything away, like one, I think there's the conversation around what is the value, right? Like what makes a course valuable? And I think we assume that our clients want tons of information because that's going to offer reassurance. Like, oh, this was a good investment. Like I spent my money wisely because I can visually see, see all this information in this portal or this course. And I think that online courses have been around long enough where our clients, our consumers, they are a little bit more savvy. They understand how these things work and what they're looking for now more than ever is let me get a result. Let me feel like I'm getting something done. Um, don't give me everything that I can Google. I just want someone to tell me very simply, what are the steps I need to take to make blank happen? And the more as a course creator and curriculum developer that you can embrace that, the more successful it will be for you to talk about what you're creating, the more successful it will be for people to see very quickly that this is the solution for them. And this is where I geek out with curriculum once somebody's inside, if you have a solid curriculum that's focused, that isn't info dumping, that is action oriented, that's when the chargebacks decrease. That's when people actually follow through and get the course done. And that's when people are like, all right, what's the next step? How can you continue right. to support me on this? And so, um, yeah, that's, it is, it's the one thing I see over and over and over. So I would caution the, anyone listening to this, if you're feeling that temptation to info dump, your client doesn't want all of your information. They really don't. Yeah. Oof. Wake up Simple. call. Folks. <laughs> your alarm clock just rang. I hope you're listening. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, really. I mean, there's value in keeping it simple. In fact, this is the curse that you run into as an expert, which is true. overcomplicating yeah. everything. You know, like the definition of an expert is somebody that takes a very complex subject and makes it simple. And and it's funny because like, I think we all know that and believe that inside, but when the rubber meets the road and it's time to actually simplify, it's actually really difficult to know what's, well, it reminds me of that quote. I mean, it's, uh, is it Mark Twain? But like, if I would have had more time, I would have written a shorter letter. <laughs> like there's, there's uh, a craft involved in distilling information down into its core principles. And it's also the thing that gets people results, right? Like if there's too much, too complicated, that creates overwhelm and resistance. And then you get the chargebacks and the drop-offs from the course. It's so anyways, I think it's a valuable reminder here that you've pointed that out. Yeah. <clears throat> So I have a something that's been ringing in the back of my head. I've been wanting to ask you this since we started like thinking about this episode, um, especially since we're in this world of of thought leadership. One of the things we hear all the time is, "I want to create a course because I just want passive income." <laughs> so <laughs> I can imagine you have some thoughts. I uh, do. Yeah. I mean, how much time do we have? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> this is yeah. an important note. We've got yeah. as much time as we need for this yeah, subject. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so can, can we just stop there for a moment? And can you just unpack what your thoughts are about what I had just said? Yes. Um, there's like, there's no such thing as passive. Like, honestly, like even when you think about like investing, right? Those aren't passive. Somebody's watching it. Somebody's monitoring it, right? Your health isn't passive, right? You're making choices about what you are eating, right? You're making choices about what you're putting into your body. Like, and even like certain businesses, there's no like set it and forget it. And so yeah. I, I understand that it sounds really sexy. I understand that it sounds really alluring, but it is the biggest load of crap that people are putting out there. And I'll be honest it's a with lie. you, right? You're right. From it's a, a lie. Career, from a curriculum standpoint, and, and I'm going to be honest with you, there are lots of different ways that you can make income in a, in a business. If your desire, right, and I'm speaking like open and honest with whoever's listening to this, if your desire is just to get into this because you want to make money, Online courses are not it for you. It is not passive, right? It is not passive from how you set it up. It is not passive from how you launch it. And most importantly, from a curriculum standpoint, right? No, curriculum is a living, breathing thing. And for most of the things that people are building courses around, whether it's um, LinkedIn and social media, whether it is, you know, business systems, whether it is, you know, 
investing or getting into crypto or whatever, all of those topics update. All of those topics right. are, you know, you have to up. So this idea that you can just build something once and then walk away from it, I think is actually grossly unfair for people to even hear that and imagine that. And it's just, that is when I see lots of people coming to me, right? A little disillusioned, a little frustrated. Like I thought this would be the pathway to, you know, making lots of money. And it can be, but if you're thinking of this, like I'm going to just set it and forget it and it's going to make me tons of money. I can be on the beach and this thing in the background is making me money. I'm just going to be honest with you. That doesn't happen that way. Heck yeah. Amen. Oh man. So glad you got back that. Back it up. Listen to it again. It's so hard to like talk about this because there's so much noise out there that is right. saying the opposite. Like the number of YouTube ads I've seen of somebody saying, oh, just follow this formula and you'll make a million dollars a year and sit on the beach. Like, just like, I mean, you were describing a second ago. It's a lot. There's a lot of people out there feeding people that. And the number of conversations I have to have with people from the systems perspective of like, I mean, I can help you set this up, but I can tell you right now, your expectations are totally misaligned and it's going to lead to disappointment. And then from my perspective, it's like, now you have to re-engineer everything. So that's kind of annoying, but like really people's expectations on this subject are grossly misaligned with reality. It seems like at least. So I'm glad you, the expert is agreeing with that. And I'm not just out here acting like an old man, shaking my finger at the new way of doing things. And I'll be honest with you. I think our world of the service-based entrepreneurs got, you know, there was a massive increase as a result of COVID. I think a lot of people jumped into this space and I am, I am focused on creating sustainable, long-term successful businesses. And I think there are a lot of people who got into this. And so the, the listener, those of you listening, be very mindful of who is marketing this to you as well, because it's like, how long have you been around? Are you just taking someone else's formula? Cause you saw that this language sells and this language works right? Does this person have any expertise in running a business, in cur- creating curriculum, in creating courses, other than they just know how to sell you? That's mm-hmm. right. Yeah. Good thing to watch out Gotta for. Do your research yes. for sure. So one of the things we were talking about, uh, it was before the show. And the, so you, you mentioned this and it kind of re uh, popped in my mind, I guess, is that having a single course isn't a business and you're about obviously creating a business. And so can you tell us like, what, what is it? What does it look like, the difference of just having a course and offer to sell versus like making it a part of a business? Can you help help us understand like what how you define those things and how they're separate? Absolutely. I feel like the two of you are bringing out like a feisty side of me. I'm like, that's what we need right now. (laughs) What people need. (laughs) Yeah. Well, it's, it's so a few years ago, somebody gave me a call. I promise this is leading somewhere. A few years, somebody got um on a call with me and they just said, you know, Jessica, can you uh, can you help me build this course? Um, and really, I was like, well, what are your goals? What do you want this to do? She's like, really, I just want to hang out on the beach and make money. I was like, well, there again, there's lots of other ways that you can do that. But but having one singular course is not a business. That's one singular product. To have a business in our particular space of coaching, consulting, thought leadership, speaking, what that means is you instead have a customer journey. A customer journey literally means there is an entry point. Usually it is a passive in, you know, digital course that people come in and they take and they get a taste of you. They get to, uh, that's another thing. I'm going to bookmark that as a side note, how courses are marketed for, for business growth, but we'll come back to that. But you come in through an entry point and I think people forget they're so focused on scrambling to find more leads and scrambling to fill a launch that they're totally forgetting that once you get someone in and they love you and they love your content, your curriculum is solid, like they don't want to go. So what's the next step? Where are you taking them? And so it's having, you know, this typically it's like three steps in somebody's business, right? You have an entry point, you have your core offer. And then at some point they may do some higher level elite private coaching with you. And that extends a, um, the lifetime value of a client. And it gets you out of the scramble mode of like, I'm just filling this one thing and I have nowhere to point all of these people. And that's having that customer journey is what gives you a business. Mm. Right. Man, and I think that's so simple to understand. It is. And the, it's lots of fun. And I have so much fun creating that, you know, we look at the curriculum and a, a conversation I have with my clients is like, where's this thing going? Like, where are you taking people? Because if they are loving your content and they are doing really well, they're getting results, they're they're going to want to stick around and they're going to want to know what's next. And it's actually a pitfall. It's funny. I work with a lot of people who are just starting out with creating group coaching programs, but I have some clients who are 
well into the seven figure space. And one of the things we figure out really quickly is like, wow, we got to get you out of this like churn and burn model of like getting clients in and then they kind of leave and there's no journey to take them on to sustain them, you know, from point A to point wherever, where you want to take them overall. Man, this is a really important conversation to have because of this sexy factor that courses have, right? This set it and forget it situation. Like it's not that. And it's round, it's grounded in the core premise here, which is that we're solving a problem. And if you have a course, a single course that solves a problem so completely first try that you can just stop at that point, then probably you're going to sell so much of it that you don't have to worry too much about the customer journey. But I also don't think that that's even possible. So I wouldn't set your mind on that. (laughs) And so like, we have to think like, if you're, if you're truly an expert in something that is a sophisticated thing in any capacity, like there's building blocks, right? And I mean, you kind of alluded to this earlier in in curriculum design and that we're taking them through the process from A to Z or wherever in between. And, And so there are milestones that have to get met along the way. And I can start to see where like this tiered offering approach can kind of be built into the basic premise here, which is that we have to build on top of the foundation. And so get them in with the initial offer, give them the the groundwork so that there's context for them to go deeper with you in the signature offer. And then for somebody that really just wants your brain to the table, now we have this coaching thing where we can customize the content that you've already learned to your specific liking. Obviously, I'm just throwing ideas out there. Maybe well, that's not you know, how you, you know see what's it. What's really but. great about that too is... Um, it, t- it when I said earlier, you 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 have to be disciplined. You can't put everything, every single thing you've learned in one particular course. Well, if you have a journey, if you have this this plan of where you're going to take them, then it's like, oh, well, I can't address that here because that's going to overwhelm them and that's going to be too much. But I can take that concept and put that in this offer, right? And then it becomes this clear stepping stone of like, okay, we tackled this. And then the next natural step to solving the next problem you have is for us to work together in this capacity. And so for some reason, I think it's because we're also focused on like, got to create this one offer. It's got to capture all these leads. It's got to do this and that. Like we put all this pressure on ourselves for this one offer to perform all of these tasks that it's like, well, wait a second. Why are we putting all this pressure on ourselves? Like make it simple, make it focused. And then you can take them along the way, just like you were saying. Yeah, man. Simple. I love that. So I want to get back to your side note, the marketing bit a little bit um, of how we like get butts in seats, so to speak. You know, like I think some people, they uh, have the expectation. We touched on this, but you build a course. It can be perfect in the curriculum design. uh, But if I built it and it's perfect, everyone will flock to it. Mm. And Often that just doesn't seem to be the case because we've got to obviously bring awareness to the thing and scratch that itch that people have so that they end up buying the product and going into that entry point. So based on all the experience you've had so far in curriculum design, getting courses, group coaching programs and stuff up and off the ground, like how does one, and I know this is a loaded question being a marketing expert myself, but maybe as simple as we can make it. How how does somebody successfully launch a course or a curriculum, a program, um, and what expectations should they have? I think if it's if it's the first time you're launching something, like my, I, I go back to my roots. Like I taught small groups, I taught in the classroom, and so even before I knew what this thing called group coaching was, and I was still in like let's create digital passive courses, I would tell clients, all right, unless you have some crazy following up multiple thousands of followers and you have this gigantic email list and you have a ton of ad spend at your disposal, chances are you're not going to get like a hundred people into your course. Right. So I like to see, yeah. And it's like, we put, again, we put all this pressure on ourselves to like hit this home run. And it's like, well, not, I've seen behind the scenes of any launches, not many people achieve that unless they have all those things in place ahead of time. So I think the easiest way for people to you know, get this out there, uh, start serving more people, start teaching more people and making more money is I just say, do the group coaching model where it's like, take your curriculum that you would have done in a course, right. Where it would have been pre-recorded and and canned and teach that to a small group of like eight, 10, 15 people. Most people I talk with, no matter what stage of business they are in, have eight to 10 
eight, 10 or 15 people at their fingertips that would probably benefit from working with them. And what I love about that approach of like, all right, let's take this curriculum that you've just designed. Let's figure out a way for you to talk about it to people. Let's get you having conversations directly with people so that they can see the benefit of working with you. And you got to get this baby off the ground, right? That's the beautiful thing about curriculum is that it is interactive. It has to be. So the pressure that you would have had on spending months of pre-recording and putting all this, you know, perfect content together let's make sure you at least have a clear roadmap of where you want to take people. It's contained. And then you get a small group of people into it, teach it live over zoom. And you'd be surprised. I think people are, are will often say to me like, but that's it. Eight, 10, 15 people. Like, cause again, they've seen the marketing where it's like launch yeah. this to a hundred people. And I'm here to tell you that being behind the scenes of so many of these launches, it just doesn't happen that way in that way. And so I'd rather see you set yourself up for success um, because I've been on the other side where I've seen people just really beat themselves up and question their value, question their worth, question what they're doing because they didn't get a hundred people in their online course when that's just the exception. Yeah, that's right. Oh, well, I mean, it's the definition of disappointment, you know, having a bunch of expectations that aren't met, like, uh, you're just setting yourself up for the worst. If, if we have the expectation that hundreds of people are going to buy this. And again, I want to, just for the listeners here, Jessica, you probably know this too, but there's something called the law of averages out there. And it basically says it takes 50 interactions with people. So 50 unique interactions for somebody to buy from you. So if you just reverse engineer the math there, one person, a hundred people in a course, what are we talking about? Five, is that 5,000? 5, 5,000 5, unique interactions. Yeah, interactions like it just doesn't scale. And then that's not accounting for the number of touch points somebody needs to have enough trust to buy it. So you multiply that by 10 touch points on average. Now we're at 50,000 touch points that needed to happen just to put 100 people into a passive course. Like it, the math just doesn't check out. And what's cool about the group coaching thing from, from at least my seat, and maybe you feel the same, is that like for especially for those first few groups, you get some iteration at play. You get to perfect what would otherwise be in the maybe one day more passive thing, the more entry level thing, because you learn what works and what doesn't, and you can kind of iterate through it. I mean, it doesn't sound like it needs to be a diamond before you launch into a group program, right? Exactly. And I think like as much as I love curriculum, like I know people are coming to me because they're like, I want to make money with this bad boy. So how do I do that? And it's yeah. like, well, if you think about it, right? You're launching an online course at 297 to 100 people, like that's a lot of freaking effort for not a gigantic Big amount, right? Yeah, right? right. And so that's why I'm like, let's get you to iterate some of this curriculum and test it out and perfect it with a small group of people. And they're going to pay you a little bit more because they're going to have some one-on-one -on -one support. And so I just think from a profitability standpoint, it's like, oh my God, like I've had people come to me and they're like, I spent all this time and I got 10 people to buy my online course. And I was like, how much were you charging again? Yeah. So for all that time and all the investments that you had to make, like you basically make no money. That's right. That's rough. It's now, rough. That's not to say like listen to people who are listening to not do online courses. I think there's <laughs> just, there's a, the right there's way to a, do it. There's a right way to do it. And I think there's a profitable way to go about building it. And I think starting with the online, excuse me, starting with the group coaching model, interacting with small groups, testing out your content, like you were saying, and figuring out what works, you know, the comedians that we see on Netflix, right? They don't get the Netflix special the first time around. They go to like small clubs and places to test things out and see what jokes land. And it's like, if they're doing that, we should do the same thing, right? Yeah, that's a good analogy. I love that. And then at some point, like I say to people, you may fall in love with the group coaching model. And it's like, I love teaching interactively. I love having this group of people. Or you could say, you know what? I've taught this thing three times. I know the content. I know where people get stuck. I know where to focus. I'm going to pre-record this and it's going to be an awesome online course. And that's how I would suggest going about putting your curriculum out in the world. And so we're not even talking about a single run through live. We're saying do it until you have such confidence that your content is where it needs to be, that it's then worth the investment to record all of the videos and have all of them edited and get them uploaded to the platform and then start the marketing for it. So there's, there's, iterations that you're recommending having happened probably more than one before going to the online course provided that somebody's not coming to the table already with a massive audience or something exactly, is that what exactly. i've heard yes yes well and just think about too the you know when people hear that they're like 
well, shoot, that's going to take all that time. And it's like, well, what's interesting about like one of the questions I always get from people is like, well, which idea should I pick? And then how much should I charge for this? Or, or, you know, yeah, what should I charge for this? And I usually say to people, you know, a successful program, a successful curriculum gets filled, not necessarily because of the price point. It gets filled because you know how to talk about it. You know how to describe this. You you are confident that you can get people results. Like it's, there's the kind of woo energy that comes with that, that it's like, well, yeah, I mean, you know, Taylor, yeah, you could charge, you know, 497 for this first time group coaching program, like go for it. It's like, when you say that number, you have to believe in it. And so the more that you test it out, the more that you put it out there, there's just a, that's when the sales becomes a little bit more effortless because you're like, I've seen this, I've tested it, I know what it works, I know what results I get people. And that's why I love curriculum. It's like it gives service-based entrepreneurs specifically because we don't have that tangible, like I'm going to sell you this like Yeti, right? Like the curriculum gives you that, that confidence of like, I've got a system, I know what works, I get people results, like I can see what I do for people. That's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. Conviction. I don't think that's talked about enough and the process of selling all this stuff because, yeah, believing in the price point and honestly, also being excited about it, right? Like the way I like to price things is I like to be a little scared of the price <laughs> I just sold somebody at. Just a little bit. It gets me excited. You know, it makes it feel worth it, right? Like if, you, if, you, if you're if you not excited by 10 people at 497 well, that should be maybe your first indicator that we should increase that a little bit, you know, like having the conviction to sell it and the excitement about delivering at that value, you're going to deliver well above and beyond that, that price point. So that's a really valuable lesson. I don't think gets talked about enough. It's like, well, if you have a good enough product, people will buy it. Well, it's not the entire equation because sometimes there's intangible ROI. It's not like, like you said, you're picking up a Yeti and you can equate value to it initially like you're kind of making um the buyer is making a gamble before the end of the 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 program you know and they're gonna need to see the results ahead of time and so those intangible rois can only be sold if you know how to communicate it uh in a way that gets people excited to buy it so um, which is true for any offer by the way like it doesn't matter what you're selling if it's value pricing we get to decide what things are worth only us gets to decide what things are worth but it only sells if we're confident that's it that's the (laughs) that's the thing you can sell anything if you're confident enough yeah for sure there's a threshold for sure (laughs) holy crap jessica this has been enlightening oh, to man. say the least and i like how simple you've made it you know like we say this a lot i think our listeners are getting sick of it but uh the true litmus test of an expert is taking something abstract and making it really simple and you've just you've done that today so thank you for sharing all of your wisdom i feel like we need to have like an ultra deep episode at some point about oh, I love that. yeah i mean i feel like we just were getting started yeah i know right? we like literally got through maybe two or three of our questions i know like for you so <laughs> yeah well okay guys leave it in the comments if you want a longer episode on curriculum design and stuff let us know we'll be happy to humor that uh but in the meantime jessica uh, if people want to learn more uh or if they want to get some more value from you like what are you working on right now that everyone can benefit from Oh, absolutely. So I am, um, so I have a a guide to share. Uh, One of my favorite things to do is once you know what your curriculum is, the next question is, how am I going to fill it? So I've assembled through testing it myself and through my most successful clients experience, 10 easy ways that you can fill your group coaching program or an online course if you're trying to put it out there to a small group of people that do not rely on you having a big email list, a ton of followers, ad spend, or anything crazy like that. And I love this because uh, part of my mission is helping more people get good curriculum in the hands of their clients. And this is absolutely the way that you do that. So follow these 10 steps. You're going to get your program out there. You're going to get some clients some amazing results and i know that's going to be linked in the show notes so that's what that's what i've been up to and um yeah awesome that sounds great of course it's in the show notes so go click on that link it is an incredible guide austin and i are going to have a copy ourselves uh so yeah definitely download it and hey if you like this episode don't forget to rate it like it subscribe to it and if you want more awesome resources like this go to speakerflow.com slash resources <laughs> bye everybody oh Thanks for tuning in today. Check the show notes for more info and see you next time. Later.